Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to show you how we can use artificial intelligence or GPT-3 to automatically create content for ourselves and then send that content to our live blog inside of Webflow. Let's get right into it. All right, so chances are, if you have a business, you have some sort of blog on your website to attract new customers, make sure your website isn't stale and to boost your SEO in the Google index. The problem with running a blog though is it takes a lot of time to maintain. Coming up with ideas is hard, writing content is hard, and it all takes a lot of time and costs you a lot of money. So today I wanna to show you how we can automate this entire process so you don't have to create your content anymore. And instead we can use artificial intelligence to do it all for us automatically. All right, so today we're gonna to be using something called OpenAI or GPT-3, which if you haven't heard is absolutely blowing up on the internet right now. But if you haven't heard of it, let's hop right in. Let me show you kind of what this is and then we can get into how we're gonna link this to Webflow. So. I'm in OpenAI's uh, chat right now, and I'll just show you this. So basically I can type in any prompt I want here and the AI program will respond to me with whatever I ask it for. So let's say, hey, can you write me a five paragraph blog post about rainbows? You know, you can write whatever you want. I'll hit submit. You can see immediately I get like this actually very nice, sophisticated blog post written for me in what was that, five, 10 seconds? So what I wanna to do today is show you how we can link this automatically to Webflow to create those blog posts for us at the click of a button. All right, so let's hop right into Airtable. That's how we're gonna start this tutorial off. All right, so let's hop into Airtable here. I have a new table right here called Blog Post Generator. Uh, and I have four fields across the top. So I have a topic field, a blog text field, a button field, and very importantly, a last modified time field. This will all make sense in a bit, but that is kind of where we're starting. All right, so the idea here is very simple. I wanna make this as simple as possible. I wanna put in a topic or a question into this field and then hit a button here that says generate blog post and then have chat GPT-3 or open AI pop out the blog post in this blog text field. That's all I wanna do. I wanna type in a topic hit a button and have my blog post appear and then we can send that to Webflow. Yeah. All right, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our little link, our API call back to GPT-3. And we're gonna do that by using something called an extension inside of Airtable. Now this is completely free. Uh, so you can do this on the free plan. But we're gonna hit extensions here. I'm gonna hit add an extension. And then I'm gonna choose this right here, this script, right? And this is where we're gonna make our JSON call back to GPT-3. I'm gonna hit add extension. And then I'm just going to come here and we can add custom code here. So I'm going to have the custom code snippet that you're going to use down in the description or linked out down in the description below. So you can use that easily. But I'm gonna go grab my code and then I'm just gonna come paste right here into my extension field. All right. Now a couple very important things I wanna walk you through here, okay? There's a couple things we're going to have to change uh, to get this working how we want. The first thing we wanna do is you wanna change this right here to the name of your table. So my table is called blog post generator, and that is what I want to put in there, all right? We come down here to this section, and this is a very important piece right here, all right? So this is going to be our prompt. This is essentially what we're going to type into this field here, all right? So whatever we type in here, that's what GPT-3 is going to respond based off of. So as you can see, I have kind of written a custom thing for my use case. You can do whatever you want here, but I have written right here, write me a long blog post about, and then I pull in this field here from my topic field, which is right here, all right? So this will be monkey in this, in this instance. Go back to my code. So write me a long blog post about, change whatever your field is called, you wanna change it here, mine is called topic. And then I have in a professional and witty voice. So write me a long blog post about monkey in a professional and witty voice. That's what mine is. Now you can change this to whatever you want. You can say, uh, write me a five paragraph long blog post about monkeys in a dark and witty voice. You can write whatever you want here, but you wanna make sure that you're pulling in your topic field, or that's what I have it called, right here so that you can dynamically pull that input back into their API, all right? So change that there. Then we're gonna come here to temperature 
Now, temperature is interesting. Um, basically, this, you can affect how creative you want GPT-3 to be on your output. Leave it around 0 0.7, 0 0.8. That gives yourself pretty nice flexibility in the outcomes of what the artificial intelligence will give you. So go 0 0.7. One is the most random. Zero is pretty focused and not creative at all. So go about 0 0.7 or whatever you want to do there. All right. And then we'll scroll down. The next thing you want to change is right here. So right after bearer, you want to paste in your GPT-3 or OpenAI API code that you can get in the settings of your OpenAI account. I have mine listed here for you. I'll go change this after the video so you, you know I won't get hacked. But you want to put your API code there or your key. Then we'll keep scrolling down. And there's one last thing we want to change and that's right here. You want to name this the field that your output is going to post into. So for me, I want my blog post to be output in my blog text field right here. And I have it named blog text. So change that to whatever your column, your output column is. All right. And so that's that. I'll hit finish editing and we're good to go there. Now, step two is we want to add a button here. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to change my field type to button. And then my label is going to be generate blog post. My action is going to be run script. And I want to run a script, the one that I just made, dashboard one. All right. And select an extension, scripting. So the scripting extension that we just coded right there. I'll hit save. You can see now that I have a generate blog post button here. All right. So the idea here now is that I can come in right here and change this topic to anything I want. Let's say Aaron Rodgers. And I'll hit generate blog posts. And I will get a blog post outcome from GPT-3 that says, write me a five paragraph long blog post about Aaron Rodgers in a dark and witty voice. So let's hit the button, see what happens. We'll see it's loading here. AI doing its work. All right, and bang, we have a blog post output right here. And we could tweak this as we want. We could go back into our prompt and say, hey, can you make this longer? Can you make this shorter? We can play with it, but for now, you can see that we have written content here in about three seconds based on our input field and hitting a button. So this is crazy, guys. This is absolutely insane. Now, if we could get this to Webflow on our live site automatically, we'd really be cooking with gas because then we type in a topic, we hit a button, and we have a live blog post on our Webflow site. So in step number three, we're going to hop into Zapier and link all that to Webflow. Let's do it. All right, so step three, we're going to hop into Zapier and we're going to create a new zap. And this is just like all the other zaps we've set up over the last few months together. Very simple. We're going to go to Airtable. Uh, we're going to do new or updated record. This is why it was very important to have that last modified field right here, because that's going to be um, basically what triggers the zap. So we'll hit new or updated record and then we'll link our account just like usual. Get to our base in our table. So my table is called blog post generator. All right. The timestamp field to check for updates is this last modified time. And then we'll hit continue. All right. So we'll test our trigger, make sure that's all working. All right, perfect. We found the record. We have our Aaron Rodgers record here, so that's working well. We'll hit continue. Now we have, if we go back to our blog posts, we can see that our output here is kind of weird. We have like these ends, which means new line and all this. So we're putting this out in a string. Basically, that just means we have all this weird formatting we need to get rid of. So to do that, we're just going to use Zapier. Uh, it's very simple. I'm just going to choose format for step number two or action format and then text. I'll hit continue. Uh, transform. I want to replace. And so basically I'm just going to replace all those weird forward slash or backslash ends um, with a space. So I want to replace uh, my blog text, all right, my input blog text. All right. Now I want to find this forward slash. I think that's a forward slash it might be a backslash. I don't really know the difference, <laughs> but I want to find this weird, uh, forward slash and forward slash n in my blog post, these weird things right here. And I just want to remove them. So there's a couple of them. All right. 
So I'll find those and I'll replace it with just a space right here. I'll hit continue. And then I'll test my action. We can see if these disappear. And perfect, they do. So they're all good now. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to add a third step where we send our blog post field to Webflow uh, to a CMS collection I have in Webflow. So we're going to hit create live item and then link your account just like usual. Boom, boom, boom. Easy peasy. Go to your site and then choose the collection that you want to update. For me, I have a collection called, I think, blog posts right here. So I'm going to update my blog posts collection in Webflow. All right. If you don't have a collection already set up, go, go set one up in, in Webflow. It's very simple. You just come right in here and uh, add a CMS collection. All right. Then I will link my fields. Body of blog will be my text formatter output right here. My name will be um, Aaron Rodgers. And then we just do false false. Just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll hit continue. So we're going to send this to my Webflow CMS collection field right here. Body of blog. All right. So you just link your fields like usual. Very simple. I have a bunch of videos on, on this if you need them. Um, and then we'll hit test action. Make sure that's all linked up. All right, perfect. Sent to Webflow two seconds ago. Let's come to Webflow and see if Aaron Rodgers is there. Let me refresh. Come back to our collection. And perfect, Aaron Rodgers is there. And we have a blog in the body of blog field. All right, perfect. So let us now publish the zap, give it a little name, call it auto blog amazing. <laughs> I mean, guys, this is going to save us so much time. Instead of having to write blogs, we can just do this. All right. Now let's test the whole workflow. So we'll come into Webflow and all right, let's see. I have a website about lawn mowers and I want to write a blog post this week to keep my website live and engaging and boost my SEO on the Google index. So I don't know. I don't want to write something. I'm tired. Uh, I'm not a good writer. Let me just come in here. I'll type in lawn mowers and I'll hit this button. That'll run for about, let's count it out four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 seconds. I'll come to zap. This will happen automatically every 15 minutes, but I'm just going to run it manually right now. We'll run it just to make sure everything gets to Webflow. I'll come to Webflow. I'll refresh. And we can see that we now have a live blog post called Lawn Mowers in Webflow right here. So on my little blog page or blog post template page, you can see if I go to my Lawn Mowers, Boom, I have a blog post right there. Automatically, inside of Webflow, I hit a button and waited 11 seconds. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you use this in super creative ways. Um, there's basically limitless applications on how to use this. I'm really digging into this over the next week or two, so I will continue to make cool videos for you guys about how we can use this AI tool to basically change our lives, all right? So, if you like this video, go down and smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing. That'd be great. If you have any questions, get down in the comments and let me know. The custom code will be down in the description. So, don't worry about that. Just go grab it from there and then tweak that little prompt as you need. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. I really, really appreciate all your support. And I'll see you all on next week's video. Peace.